make sure we're streaming. There we are. Cool. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Today is October 29th, 2019, and we're 12 p.m. Pacific time, my time. And uh, this is open discussion on Julian Assange part two on uh, the last stream we did part one it was a couple of days ago we sort of did a little intro to wikileaks and julian assange and we looked at one of the main uh, sort of catalysts that uh, was uh, you know the driving force behind the united states uh, coming after julian assange okay and uh, what we're going to do today is uh, just follow up uh, that discussion and uh, see uh, how much news we can cover, uh, how much information we can cover. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. And while we wait, uh, and I have a whole bunch of stuff, links that, you know, I put together uh, that we can go through. There is there 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 is more than this as well. But I thought we start the discussion here. Uh, resubscribe. Welcome, welcome to another stream. Direct Relief Charity, 2018. Chicho Live. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, so what we're gonna do is um, while we wait for people to show, um, as you know or you should know or you, it might have hit your radar, there's major protests going on around the world. One of the main places, one of the front lines of uh, what's taking place, and it's sort of the same thing across the globe, is uh, what's going on in Chile. And I've come across a couple of uh, links, a couple of uh, videos, which are incredibly inspirational, pure power, really. So I thought uh, while we wait for people to show up, um, show on to the stream, we take a look at these uh, these videos okay this is one of them this is um i grabbed this from my twitter feed and i just retweeted saying just pure power um now following thank you for the follow i'm not sure how uh i can kill the sound on these i used to be able to kill the sound yay boy <laughs> just subscribe thank you for the subscribe uh uh, dry and draw lions how are you doing thank you for the subscribe brother hope you're doing well hey chicho good to be back long time no see long time luca luca blay luca blay should be in a stream labs option should be in stream labs option i'm going through um obs right now so i'm not going through stream labs i do have the stream labs i believe the browser thing set up Ch -ch -ch -ch. How do we kill the sound effects? Hey Chicho, just in time. Just started my lunch and work. Hey Chicho, hope you're doing awesome as always. Lonely Piggy, how are you doing? Lions, I hope you're having a fantastic lunch. And you know what? I'll leave the sound alone for now, just because uh, I don't want to mess around with it. Uh, but let me show you guys this. This is uh, just hit my Twitter feed from Sarah Abdullah. I'm pretty sure it's going around. Uh, a lot of places this is uh as protests in chile against uh, uh, pinera's neoliberal regime continue a chilean orchestra gives a breathtaking open air performance on the people uh, of the people united will never be defeated in santiago okay so figure while we're waiting uh we'll uh, take a look at this thing okay uh, I gotta keep the chat up so I can see it. Um, just to let you know, you spelt Julian wrong in your latest YouTube upload title. Oh man, did I do that? Chicho, Chicho, what are you doing? You spelling it wrong. Thank you very much for that um, channel. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna kill the, uh, I'm just gonna make it black for the video. Uh, display for a second okay gang uh, you're gonna see the camera just because I'm gonna go through the back end and 
do it right thank you very much for the correction my god i can't believe i spelled it wrong my spelling is horrendous at times right well most of the time is horrendous then i spell it wrong my god my god crazy crazy Jew oh i did too thank you very much for that brother let me correct it i'm going to be correcting it on youtube and uh and uh, bit shoot which i spelt it incorrectly as well julian let's correct it on bit shoot first save hi everyone this is chicho oh, that's uh, chicho on uh, bit shoot kicking in julian and let's correct it on here as well i usually try to catch these but man difficult difficult when your eyes have been looking at the screen for so long that should be correct awesome thank you very much for that brother double chicho it's the chicho first <laughs> daniel thank you for that thank you for that if you want to uh, mess with sounds after it's on the stream left site under alert box follows okay i'll look into it uh or subscribe thank you very much for that we watching chicho watching chicho <laughs> so take a look at this this is what's going on in chile right now okay no come on feed Okay, I'm going to reload this. Let's check it out. Hold on. Let's just go to it. Incredible, right? Incredible. Uh, so, what, what are we listening to? This is uh, Lonely Piggy. This is what's going on during the day in Santiago, Chile. Okay. This was uh, Chilean Orchestra um, doing the performance of The People United Will Never Be Defeated, right? X, how are you doing, right? Sounds like powerful, powerful 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 right that's what's going on during the day in chile right now right in santiago with the protests against neoliberalism austerity and what is basically planned to come to the western world uh, they're they're singing basically uh spanish the the people united will never be defeated right that's what's going on during the day let me show you what's going on at night right and both of these are music related and at night time they have curfews curfew in effect in chile right now right so everybody has to stay in home okay they're chanting this pentagon which means coward x worldwide movement coming soon brother very 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 soon and it is here who is julian Nichols? taco we will get to it um we're still seeing double chicho are you still seeing double chicho 
<laughs> Check it out. Uh, so Julian Assange is the most important journalist right now in the world, uh, being completely persecuted, tortured. Okay. In oops, come on. This is, let's open this up in a new tab. Let's just go to YouTube. Okay. He's, he's basically the front line of, uh, information where the powers that we are trying to prevent information to filter out to the general population he's the founder of wikileaks and wikileaks julian assange and all the whistleblowers and all the people that work for wikileaks they hold power accountable right this, this is the only time really in history that we have seen power to be held accountable on this level where we have access to what is being done in our name, what the governments are doing around the world and domestically, right? So we're seeing history unfold in real time. And this is the only time that we have had a true record of what's taking place geopolitically that we can rely on. All previous history, human history, whatever you're taught in school, you have to question that because history is taught uh, told uh, by the victors right so there's a lot of history that we've been told to be fact which is pure bs this is the only time we're seeing things unfold and we actually find out what politicians governments corporations are doing to our societies right You still have two views of my face. How come? Oh my God, you still do. My bad game. I played the music without this display capture. Should we do it again? Let's do it again. <laughs> my apologies, gang. I gotta keep this going. Okay, we got that. I should have checked on the chat. So he's a private intelligent agent who is giving us the scoop. What we need to know about the truth. Yes okay we live in a society wasn't uh, uh that whistleblower from a few years ago uh julian assange uh julian assange somewhat a hero somewhat a hero huge no that's edward that's edward stone yes how you doing sticks are man here's the video let's watch this again okay <laughs> And this is uh, taking place in front of a church uh, in Santa Santiago. Okay, it's um, I think the most famous church in Santiago, Chile, right now. Can you give me uh, some explanation on the situation in Chile? What actually happened there politically and economically? Uh, Allure Gaming. Uh, sure. Let me just uh, read up on the chat, and then uh, here is. By the way, so Chile, there's major demonstrations happening, right? Major protests happening and during the day people are allowed to 
do what they're doing. The military is cracking down on them hard. They've killed a whole bunch of people, arrested a whole bunch of people. The odds are a lot of people have disappeared already, right? This is pure neoliberalism, uh, like absolute, that's been implemented in Chile for the last three decades, four decades, right? And uh, the laws put in place were put in place by the neoliberal regimes, right? Supported by the Western government, specifically the United States. Okay, and it's basically austerity up the yin yang where everything has been slowly cut, right? Social, uh, social spending, infrastructure spending, education, health care, um, wages have frozen, tons of people being laid off and whatnot. And if you want to see how that begins, right, who are the people behind that type of regime? Um, that implement these types of austerity and stuff all you have to look at is the eu more domestically in canada all you have to look at is what the uh, alberta in canada specifically what the alberta government is doing in alberta where they're cutting back they're firing thousands of workers they're freezing wages they're closing hospitals uh, and all that jazz right uh, many of us don't watch the mainstream news because of fake news. It's hundred percent. It's garbage. You can't watch corporate propaganda. You do not watch it. You're being programmed if you are. My manager, who's Bolivian, came into the break room and heard the chant and just chuckled and whistled it. Whistled it to himself. Awesome. South Americans have been pushed around for so many years. Their nations have been stripped of wealth without getting anything in return 100 percent the rich getting richer the poor getting poor and chile has the highest disparity one of the highest disparity countries in the world right where the neoliberal western governments are promoting chile as the example that we should follow right which they're implementing right now with austerity and cutting back everything and just basically centralization of power and filtering resources to the top right money to the top wealth to the top power to the top capital to the top Okay, austerity measures in the UK have killed 120,000 people since 2000. It won't be long. Yeah, Matthew, uh, it's in Canada, it's kicking into gear. Alberta is example. EU, uh, UK, United States, all over the Western world. It's taken 30 years, 40 years for Chile to reach this level, right? It has happened before, but because the military dictatorship really there is so powerful and the military in south america central america that has disappeared tens of hundreds of thousands of people killed countless people tortured countless people over the last three four five decades that military was trained in the united states under the school of the americas right that is what we are witnessing happen in chile is an uprising against neoliberalism that was pushed from the western world into latin and south america right so in chile what we're watching right now is the demonstrations the chants the singing taking place during the day here's what's happening at night because they're under curfew no one allowed to go out right this is an opera singer singing outside of her balcony okay in the middle of the night or at in the evening where everybody is in their homes and the military is patrolling the streets and anybody that's in the streets, they either beat the crap of disappear or kill, right? This is another video. So the church during the day, this is what's going on at night in Chile. Sorry about the sound. I'm continuing this because there's a close up of her singing.
So if you want the the links to those, uh, just go to my Twitter feed. I've linked them. Uh, I've reposted them, retweeted them. Okay, there was a couple of questions here. The first one was, uh, so the land of the free is choking uh, freedom in Chile, but what is the goal of the U.S.? Resource. Uh, resources, control, right? Uh, land, food. Uh, it's basically... It goes back to something, uh, Taco, uh, that we've talked about before, which is this differential accumulation. Hi, Dante, by the way. Thanks for popping in, brother. Uh, it's uh, basically about differential accumulation. So the name of the game is not how much you're making and how much wealth you have in an absolute format. It's about relativism, right? Relative to the rest of the world, if you're growing at 1% and the rest of the world is in a recession, right uh, where growth rate is negative then you're the king of the hill right so that's one thing the western worlds have tried to do the western powers have tried to do for a number of decades which is keep others down while they uh, get all the growth that is coming to them right cheap resources uh cheap labor no environmental regulations or whatnot right uh, Tink, uh, you mentioned, are we essentially saying that in the next 30 years or so, all those Western countries will end up like Chile now? 100% Tink. That is the road we are on. If that's not obvious to most people, it should slowly become more obvious to them in the years to come. It should be obvious to them since the 2008 financial scam that happened, where most of the growth has, has gone to Wall Street, right? Uh allure gaming but is socialism really better than neoliberalism who says there's only two choices to our societies neoliberalism or socialism or capitalism or communism or this there are multiple multiple systems that we could function under and there are probably systems that aren't even implemented yet that we could function under right aside from that um Apologies about the little technical stuff where you saw double face of Chicho, two cameras kicking in. Okay. Uh, what we like to do right now, what I'd like to do is follow up with the discussion we had uh, previously. Okay. With uh, two days ago where we talked about Julian Assange and stuff like this. And what we did was we sort of talked about who WikiLeaks was, uh, who Julian Assange is, sort of a basic intro right and if you want to follow the discussion what we talked about yesterday uh part one is already loaded up on bitshoot and youtube and i'll provide the link in the description of this video once we load this video on bitshoot and youtube as well right but that's what we talked about we looked at the full video for the collateral murder uh video that manning uh had leaked to wikileaks that came out in 2010 sort of showing us the war crimes that were being committed in that specific instance which basically links up to all the war crime that is being committed by the u.s military and western powers for the last at least two decades and much much longer okay uh sticks are around that's how the world goes around financial growth when you don't have the resources yourself someone else um, have them for you yeah basically most wars are resource wars right or bankers wars wall street wars okay now as far as following up our discussion we had yesterday i got a bunch of links that i have here uh some videos some articles that uh, i think they're worthwhile taking a look at uh viewing or reading okay one of the things uh, we should take a look at is uh there's a few articles because what's happening with julian assange right now is more than what's uh you know that he's being tortured that the law is not being applied that it's most powerful countries in the world going after a journalist trying to shut him down this has huge implications in regards to the uh what the united states can do around the world because if they can go after julian assange who hasn't been to the united states who is in the uk australian citizen go after him based on u.s laws and be able to extradite him pull him out of another country in the world and bring him to the united states and put him in jail 
execute him, suicide him, whatever you want to, however, whatever you think they're going to do to him, and torture is a part of it. That means they can do this to anyone. So that means the United States jurisdiction is global, right? So if you break U.S. laws, even though you're not in the United States, then the United States will have the right to pull you out of wherever you are and take you to the United States to do whatever the hell they want to you, right? Huge. That's one implication as Julian Assange being a human being. As far as he's a journalist, let's read a couple of articles of what it means for Julian Assange to be extradited to the United States and why the corporate propagandists, the mainstream media, the Guardian, New York Times, Washington Post, and all these rags, right? Why they why they are not news agencies because they don't really understand what is happening to them what is happening to julian assange means that they no longer can do journalism which they haven't really done for a number of decades now right they've just been the mouthpieces for corporate power okay got to go chicho will you be streaming in about three hours time i finished work then uh sorry lions uh i'm gonna be streaming this for a couple of hours two hours uh three hours but tomorrow we're gonna do a math live stream and i believe we're starting that uh let me just take a look at the events uh thing the math stream we're going to be doing da -da 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 -da. Uh, it starts at 1 30 p.m pacific time my time in europe kick it up eight hours right so uh 9 30 10 30 p.m uh tomorrow we're doing a math live stream okay as far as uh what what is happening to julian assange what it means for us okay let's read one of these articles and we're going to come back to this i got a, some links here regarding specifically regarding journalism what julian assange's persecution torture extradition to the united states means for journalism so let's read this article first okay uh, and the article is by who wrote this who wrote this I, i'm not sure who wrote this uh by 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 wire right so i've gone to the site every now and then i get my news sources from multiple different sources so uh, I move around a lot, right? So this article is it's not that long. It's not, well, I guess it is It is a nice chunk, but it's not as long as the article that we read yesterday. So let's read this thing just for, for it to give us an idea of what it means uh, for Julian Assange to be extradited. And I'm gonna put the chat here. That way I can uh, view the chat. Oops, the chat's taking up all space. Uh, how do we do this how do we do this um, okay I'm gonna pop into the chat every now and then uh, da, 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 da. let's see if I move this over I can read it cool can we make Julian into a meme so the information becomes global and you can't dis destroy ideas uh, taco Julian Assange is on the forefront of many people uh, the news uh, what we're looking at me being one of them and there are millions of others that are following what's happening to julian assange any news agency any any news source that you're using that doesn't have julian assange as one of the top pieces that they talk about on a regular basis is a is a rag is garbage don't use them to get global news global information to understand what's going on in the world because this is one of the most important things that's happening in the world okay spread the name and what he stands for that's how you keep it going don't let yourself be silenced 100 sticks or mana so i'm going to read this article i might not check the chat uh i might for if i need a little break i'll uh, check the chat okay julian assange what the fate of wiki wikileaks founder means for the future of global journalism okay this is all quote now quote 
The UN have made numerous statements in defense of Julian, uh, in defense of Assange, stating that if his extradition to the U.S. happens as planned, he he will face numerous po potential human rights violations, and that he has the right to expect asylum and refugee within the U.K. Given that he faces hundreds of years in prison, should he be convict, uh, convicted on American soil, a potential sentence highly disproportionate to to his alleged offenses okay so i'm going to bring up the chat so i see the chat hopefully i can read the whole thing yep okay quote uh london by newswire news in april 2018 the 48 year old australian uh founder of wikileaks julian assange was arrested from within the ecuadorian embassy in london assange has spent the previous seven years under the embassy's protection to avoid facing questioning by Swedish authorities after two WikiLeaks volunteers in the country made complaints of sexual misconduct against him and a fourth accusation of rape. Three of the four complaints were eventually dropped as no trial took place within the five years required by Swedish law. The rape charge remains active due to its 10, uh, 10 year statute of limitations. The Swedish authorities have indicated they would like to continue investigating the rape charge and therefore will try again to extradite Mr. Assange. Prior to their arrest, Assange's legal team claimed that uh, any attempt to remove him from the embassy would be both illegal and a violation of international refugee law, stating, it will be a sad day for democracy if the UK and Ecuadorian governments are willing to act as compl uh, com complices to the Trump administration's determination to prosecute publishers for publishing truthful information. Okay, so that's a little bit of background. And just regarding the sexual charges in Sweden, everyone agrees now that those sexual charges were fabricated. They, the Swedish, it, this doesn't go into it, but the Swedish police interviewed Julian Assange when he was in Sweden and they deemed that there was nothing illegal that took place and they released him and that's when julian assange came to the uk right so it's not going into the major details it's giving a very basic background to this right since its inception inception in 2006 back to the quote back to the article non-profit organizations wikileaks has exposed many wrongdoings illegal activities and human rights violations by making countless classified military and government documents emails videos and diplomatic cables available to the public these have included an expose of u.s detention camp guantanamo bay where some prisoners were designated as off limits to the international community of the red cross something the u.s military had previously denied and the release of the infam infamous and horrifying classified u.s military footage from an attack on baghdad during the iraq war this material exposed alleged war crimes that included u.s military forces laughing as they fired from gunships at two reuters journalists civilians children and iraqi emergency services killing many end quote for now that's the video that we looked at two days ago in part one of this live stream talking about julian assange right that's the collateral murder video okay that manning leaked to wikileaks and wikileaks published in 2010 okay i'm just gonna read one comment here sticks are on if sweden would extradite him he would get shipped to the u.s within one hour american dea have had agents here doing doing work without sweden doing anything about it when asked about it they don't want to talk about it 100 percent agreed the reason julian assange seeked asylum in the ecuadorian embassy was because if he was extradited to to sweden the odds are he wouldn't even left the airport in sweden he would have been transferred to um to a cia black ops plane and flown to the united states and would have never heard about julian assange again okay i play the stocks i play the stocks uh brother this is a serious stream if you're here to play games highly recommend you go play games on another stream right ban comes instant in this stream i hope you decide to stick around i hope you decide to enlighten yourself and figure out what the hell's going on in the world okay brother or sister of course right 
unless you want to play our games unless you want to play our games okay in 2010 back to the article quote in 2010 a 22 year old u.s army intelligence analyst chelsea manning formerly known as bradley was arrested and charged with leaking classified information garnered from the government systems including the baghdad airstrike videos along with around 260,000 classified u.s embassy cables all of which were subsequently published by wikileaks Assange and his organization refused to confirm Manning as a whistleblower, stating, we never collect personal information on our sources, but did, however, go on to offer Manning the full protection of the organization, including extensive legal assistance. Okay. Quote, in February 2013, Manning confessed in open court to providing archives of military and diplomatic files to WikiLeaks and pleaded guilty to 10 criminal counts in connection with the material. In her statement, she recounted how she joined the military, became an intelligence analyst in Iraq, and decided that certain files should become known to the American public to promote a wider debate about foreign policy. Okay, and that's Chelsea Manning right there. Continuing with the article, WikiLeaks and Assange have always claimed that there, theirs is a mission, cons mi mission consistent with the core values of good journalism, a desire to seek and expose the truth, and that their information gathering methods are consistent with those of other journalists across the globe in a highly digital age. They also insist as all good journalists should, that the organizations, organization go to great lengths to protect the identity of their sources. In March 2018, almost a year before his arrest in London, a sealed indict, in, indictment was issued by the U.S. Department of Justice against Assange. In November of same year, U.S. prosecutors accidentally revealed that Assange had been indict, indicated under seal in u.s federal court the revelations coming as the result of an error in different unrelated court filing five months later on the day of assange's arrest from the ecuadorian embassy this u.s indictment was unsealed revealing that assange has been charged with conspiracy to commit computer intrusion a minor infringement carrying only a five-year maximum prison term the specific allegations against Assange that he attempted to help Chelsea Manning cover her tracks by making it look like security leak for which she was charged was being done by an outside outsider hacking into the system rather than an insider with authorized access had already been used in the Manning trial and was considered a very weak allegation by many. Okay. Continuing with the article. On 22nd May 2019, however, the U.S. went on to file 17 additional courts against Assange under, under the Espionage Act of 1917, a, de a decision that has been heavily criticized by publishing, uh, giant, uh, publishing giants, including the Washington Post and the New York Times, who insist that Assange faces charges for actions considered standard practice for many modern journalists, including persuading officer, official sources to leak information which is in the public interest. The charges against Assange carry a combined jail term of, of 170 years. Okay, I'm just going to stop there and read a comment. Ruhan, evening just joined so i've missed lots but hate to hear this about my home country sweden but sadly it's true the government in sweden would never stand up against us sad agreed and everyone knows that and knew that as soon as the charges were filed against julian assange at the time right continuing with the article quote uk home secretary sajid javid signed an extradition order in May 2019 that opened the way for the courts to consider whether Assange should be sent to trial in the U.S. This first extradition hearing is due to, be, due to take place in early 2020, though it's likely that any pro-extradition outcomes will be appealed all the way to the Supreme Court. 
meaning that Assange is likely to remain incarcerated in the UK for the foreseeable future. It's worth noting, however, that should a UK general election take place before Assange's extradition, the order will have to be made again. If this were to happen, Assange has some cause to hope that the decision will be over, would be overturned, particularly if a Labour government were to triumph. Party leader Jeremy Corbyn in is a longtime critic of U.S. foreign policy and an outspoken supporter of Assange, who shortly ha after his arrest appealed to the U.K. government to block his extradition at all costs. Assange's jail term for failing to adhere to his bail conditions regarding the sexual allegations made by the sweet made by the two Swedish women ended on September 22nd. Not 2019. In a court hearing, however, he was deemed to pose a significant flight risk and remain incarcerated at HM Prison Belmarsh, a highly secure a high security facility that houses some of the UK's most dangerous and violent criminals and terrorists while he awaits extradition. His future is uncertain, but tied in in inescapably to the future. Uh, of global journalism okay i'm just going to end reading there and just read one more comment uk general extra election coming in december labor could win matthew possibly and this is one of the reasons uk is on the forefront and there's so many tentacles involved so many outside forces playing a major part in the uk elections and in brexit and what's taking place uh, regarding UK politics, right, including United States, including the EU, including neoconservatives and corporations, what's taking place in the UK because it's directly linked up to Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, and accountability. Okay, continuing on with the article, quote Wagen Smith in 2010, Smith gave uh, refuge to Julian Assange, the founder of Whistleblower website wikileaks first at the frontline club and then at his uh, county house said in a recent interview with by wire news i think julian assange has done a huge public service but the nature of what he has done is doing a sort of host or a sort of dead letterbox for whistleblower material and then publishing it out publishing it out to the public domain has meant he has become the target for the US British intelligence services and governments who have been embarrassed by the leaks or whistleblower material he has put out there uh, quoting this person quote our governments our courts British have put him Assange into Belmarsh prison our terrorist prison our least pleasant prison and they have done that to present to the public that he is a danger to them but this simple this simple not true continuing on with their article by filing charges on their espionage acts the u.s department of justice has alleged the first amendment to the united states constitution in defense of government secrets the first amendment uh, amendment dates to 1791 and is part of the american bill of rights a charter that protects the nation's key freedoms the u.s government for example is prohibited from making laws which represent uh, represent an establishment of religion and must protect the right to free exercise of religion freedom of speech freedom of the press the right to uh, peaceably assemble and to petition against the government to redress grievances the Obama administration had previously debated charges charging Assange under the same act, but had decided against this out of fear it could have a negative effect on investigative journalism and could be unco unconstitutional. The 2000, the 102-year-old act was passed by Congress shortly after the U.S. entered World War I and made it a federal crime to attempt to undermine the U.S. armed forces during a war or to assist the war effort uh, of the nation's enemies in any way. While the intention of the act 
was to def define and punish acts of spying during wartime. It necessarily placed new limits on America's First Amendment rights, as anyone who publicly protested wars or military draft would be open to pers uh, prosecution. The non-specific language used in the act also made it possible for the U.S. government to target anyone who opposed the war in, in thought or deed, whether these were pacifists, neutralists, communists, anarchists, or socialists. To date, only 53 people, including Chelsea Manning, have been charged under this act. Only a year after it was passed, the act was extended to make it a federal crime for anyone to use this loyal, profane, uh, scrolious or abusive language language against u.s government the constitution the armed forces or the american flag increasing the scope of the act to potential peacetime prosecution for citizens although this edition was repealed in 2020 oh sorry appealed in 1920 many people still face similar charges during growing war post-war fears of communism in the late 1940s to the late 1950s, a campaign led by Senate uh, Senator Gen Joseph McCarthy, now no known as McCarthyism, saw a period of heightened political um, repression with, it, with the dissemination of fear from both communist influence or on American institutions and espionage by Soviet agents. During the McCarthy era, hundreds of Americans were accused of being communist or communist sympathizers they became the subject of aggressive investigations and questioning before before government or private industry committees and many suffered loss of employment ruined reputations or even prison terms though most punishments came about through trial trial verdicts that were later overturned as unconstitutional or illegal the Espionage Act does not specifically criminalize national security breaches by journalists. However, no previous administration has tried to put it to test. Trump's government will no doubt draw conviction from the fact that the law does explicitly ban the publication of government secret and doesn't specifically protect the press, giving them enough of a gray, gray area to hold for a successful prosecution of Assange. The Trump administration is also taking another avenue of attack by arguing that through encouraging whistleblower Chelsea Manning to hack classified military information fr from government servers and by publishing this material with no regard for Manning's safety or any other individual uh, implicated or involved, Assange does not fit the definition of a journalist and therefore does not necessarily have to be considered as such during any legal proceedings. This is an accusation that Assange's legal team will likely strongly dispute. Okay, I'm just going to take a pause in the article and read some of the comments that were posted. I was seeing them pop up. Okay, Olive, greetings, greetings. Uh, t -t -t -t. Um, will be pretty interesting. Uh, my bold prediction is Lib Dem, Labour, Tories, and Brexit Party take a quarter each, dividing us yet further and making even worse mess. Possible, possible. Greetings, Chicho. All of, all of. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Matthew, I honestly think it's too soon to call for Labour. This is regarding Brexit. I bet George Washington is spinning his grave uh, many, many, many times. A taco usa is a young nation who gained a lot of power fast they have a lot to learn still big time big time i just want brexit over with okay i'm going to get back to the article now how much we got you've got a little bit to read not much okay so this this article is a great article to give you a general overview of what's taken place with julian assange is skipping over some of the details some of the to me important events such as the charges being filed in sweden which are completely bogus which most people would agree now except any mag rag you read right which is corporate propagandists right continuing with the article quote one line of defense for assange is to raise issues under european convention on human rights as the extradition treaty between the u.s and the uk has a clause citing the exception uh, exception exception of political prisoners 
Assange has certainly become something of a political hero to some compared to the likes of Nelson Mandela for the heroic way he has exposed alleged government crimes and unlawful wars. Many are also sympathetic towards Assange for the many uh, indignities and violations he has suffered to avoid prosecution by those who oppose him, who are uh, hell-bent on punishing his ex um, exposure of their alleged crimes and misdoings. Some believe that the UK should be doing more to protect Assange from American extradition, particularly as it as in July 2019, the US Attorney General William Barr reinstated the death penalty in the country for federal crimes over 16 years. Before Assange's April arrest, Ecuadorian President L Lenin Moreno was accused by two UK Home Security uh, secretaries that he would not be extra um, was assured by let me read that sentence again uh, before Assange's April arrest Ecuadorian president Lenin Moreno was assured by two UK homes secretaries that he would not be extradited to a country where he could face capital punishment with letters signed by Jeremy Hunt and Boris Johnson both confirming that under human rights law a prison a person cannot be extradited if they could face either torture or death in fact the U UN have made numerous statements in defense of Assange stating that if his extradition to the US happens as plans he will face numerous potential human rights violations and that he has the right to ex expect asylum and refugee within the UK given that he faces hundreds of years in prison should he be convicted on American soil a potential sentence highly disproportionate to his to his alleged offenses Irrespective of whether the activities of WikiLeaks are considered journalism or simple data dumping, the details of the indictment against Assange by the U.S. Department of Justice could potentially risk the principles which are es um, essential to exposing government crime and the future investigative journalism, journalistic practices. Kristen Hoffensen current editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks and an Icelandic investigative journalist appointed by Assange in September 2018 has said the action that Assange took were those of an investigative journalist and not a criminal cyber hacker. At Assange's most recent court appeal in October 2019, he was described as a shadow of himself, mumbling, stuffling, stuffling, stuttering and staggering to say his own name with high profile supporters including former mayor of london kevin livingston and document documentary maker john pilger amongst his supporters in the packed public gallery and with dozens of protesters gathered outside the courtroom assange's barrister mark summers qc talked of a direct link between the reopening of the investigation and the trump administration stating Quote, our case will be that this is a political attempt to signal to journalists the consequences of publishing information. It is illegally unprecedented, end quote. Continuing with the article. At the hearing, Assange himself told the judge that he feels he is up against a superpower with unlimited resources and appealed to fighting back uh, appeared to be fighting back tears as he added, I don't understand how this this is equitable. This superpower had 10 years to prepare for this case, and I can't access my writings. It's very difficult where I am to do anything. Quote, they are saying journalists and whistleblowers are enemies of the people. They have unfair advantages dealing with documents. They know the interior of my life with my psych. Uh, psychologist they steal my children's dna this is not equitable what is happening here and quoting assange continuing with the article it's known it's now known that he has been moved to the health ward of belmash prison and 
And this fact, along with his most recent court appearance, has done nothing to disperse rumors that both his physical and mental health are under intense threat. As Assange awaits his extradition hearing in spring 2020, Amnesty International have once, has once again uh, asked the British authorities to acknowledge the risk, the real risk of human rights violations that this action would expose Assange to, stating, quote, quoting, Amnesty International now. The UK must abide by its obligations under international human rights laws law that forbid the transfer of individuals to any country where they would face serious human rights violations. Were Julian Assange to be extradited or subject to any other transfer to the US, Britain would be in breach of these obligations. End quoting. Uh, Amnesty International. This most, continuing with the article, this most uh, recent court management hearing has shown that the mental torture of Assange has already begun. The question is how many more in, in indignities and infringements that WikiLeaks founder must suffer before the UK steps in and stops the, this McCarth, McCarth, McCarthyist witch hunt in its attack. Okay, and. That's the end of the article, and, and this article was written ro written by Rowan Martin and Michelle O'Sullivan, contributors to Nick Davies and Vaughan Smith, edited by Michael O'Sullivan. Okay, so this was a pretty good recap of what has taken place so far. We read an article yesterday, which, and I'm just linking up this article in the chat. Uh, and I'll provide the link in the description of this video as well, whatever we get through today, um, all the resources. And we read an article yesterday in, in yesterday's live stream where uh, we read the account of one of the people that was in the extradition hearing, the first extradition hearing, where he gave an account of Julian's condition, right? And that was an in-depth article. So you can take a look at that uh, video and the article that was linked up in the previous uh, video as well. Okay, I'm just going to read up on uh, catch up on some of the chat chat and then we're going to start looking at some other sources. The next thing actually that I want to uh, show you guys is an interview by Roger Waters because he states basically uh, pretty well what is going on and then we can read about the torture case. Okay, so let me cue this up. Make sure it's not starting right away. Cool. I'm just going to read uh, some of the chat here uh, and catch my breath. Okay. Uh, Sticks Armana. This is the kind of article you don't read in the standard newspapers 100%, right? So, this is what I've sort of been trying to do in the background is to catch up with a lot of articles. I've read a lot more and watched a lot more videos than what I'm linking up here, uh, obviously, right? So, I'm taking the stuff that is presenting the information right and this article that we just read was pretty benign it's not really taking one side or the other like we stated at the beginning it really didn't go into the detail of how bogus those uh, rape charges coming in from Sweden were right you could read countless articles of how bogus those charges are and how fabricated they were right so this article was on the benign level. It didn't take Julian Assange's side. It didn't take the U.S. government's side. It just stated what has transpired so far. And you won't even read anything this benign in the mainstream news, right? In corporate propagandas. Um, Matthew, they have no reason to keep him locked up, but they cannot allow him to be free. After Epstein, the suicide route won't fly, so they may have to get creative. Matthew... A lot of people assumed that there was no way Epstein would be suicided or disappeared or allowed to be said that he committed suicide for him to run free, considering he basically transferred $50 billion two days before his suicide, right? So no one thought that Epstein would be disappeared, okay? But they did it anyway, because the general population, they control... Uh, are the governments control the main uh, news sources, the propagandas, the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, ABC, Fox News, and all this crap, BBC. Uh, 
and all that all that stuff in Canadian mainstream media, they control the narrative, right? So Epstein was a huge story and it should still be huge. It lifted the curtain, the veil behind what's really going on in Wall Street, in Hollywood, in our governments, right? But it was disappeared. Don't underestimate them. They could easily suicide Assange as well. Okay, Phew, I made it. Hey, Alondra, Void, how you doing? What do you think about uh, esports? Um, so, Pash, the the regarding China and any criticism of Hong Kong and stuff, I think it's ridiculous. I personally uh, like just to let you guys know. I I believe in direct action. Put in my uh, my money where my mouth is. Try to anyway, as best as I can. Right. So, because I'm against a lot of patent laws, copyright laws for sure. I've been in boycott mode of movie theaters for a long time. So esports and whatnot. If you find the certain thing that you enjoy in life, if the people controlling that thing go against your will, your freedoms, they're co-opting your government, right? They're they're committing regulatory capture and passing laws that go against you. Boycott them. The hell with them, right? war did we ever get clear coverage of what happened to epstein uh the media just bombarded the news with all kinds of conflicting information i'm still spinning from it epstein the thing we have to know is the powers that be that may that control the main news sources made the story go away right this was one of the biggest stories that has come up come to the forefront in the last century really Epstein is one of the greatest, one of the biggest stories that should be talked about for years to come, should be on the forefront right now, right beside what's happening with Julian Assange, right beside what's happening with Chile, South America, and the mass protests around the globe, right? But they are not covering it. They're not covering it because all of that Epstein, what happened with Epstein is linked up to Hollywood, to Wall Street, to our governments, and they control the media, the mainstream corporate media. So again, I'll repeat this. If you're getting your main news, if your main news source is any of the mag rags or mainstream news sources that are sanctioned by the state, BBC, CBS, NBC, CNN, Fox, you are misinformed. You have to go to specific people that you trust to get your news and you have to jump around from one source to another. You can use one of their articles, read them and question everything you read from their articles, but don't have them as your main source of news. They should be your tertiary source of news, if at all. Okay. Epstein had a lot of dirt on powerful people. What happened was the only way to silence him. If everyone hope uh hi everyone hope you're all doing well crazy bro athen how are you doing hannah how's life should we listen to uh this interview by all this and more coming up in today's going underground but first straight to our continuing coverage of uk solitary confinement how's the how's the sound on this on the video playing gang is it too loud is it too low i can kick it up a lot uh, a little bit well it's maxed on youtube I don't know if me changing my volume on my computer uh, affects it. Uh, but let me know what we're going to do. We're just going to play it. Of the world's most famous okay. publisher, it's a nice Julian interview. Assange. Joining me from New York is legendary Ten Floyd out. frontman Roger Waters. Awesome. Roger, thanks for uh, coming on the show again. First, your reaction to Britain or British authorities denying clemency for Julian Assange. I'm flabbergasted and horrified uh, in equal measure the proceedings a couple of days ago in that magistrate's court um, were nightmarish to for that to be happening in an english courtroom makes me thoroughly ashamed of being an englishman i can't believe that they're proceeding with it as we all know um, in the extradition treaty between the united states and the uk it does it is not applicable to any uh, political crime or complaint 
So uh, I, don't know what, I don't know on what other grounds they're trying to extradite Assange, but it is clearly a put-up job, and they're clearly trying as hard as they can to kill him. Julian Assange has, is becoming a warning to other journalists that if you tell the truth, particularly to power, we will get you. And that's what that is the message that is being transmitted. Well, it didn't even make the evening news bulletins here. Well, you know, I was, I was there on uh, October the 2nd. I sat up with John Pilger on a little stage outside the home office, I, and I sang my song, Wish You Were Here, and I made a speech, and John made a very good speech uh, to the assembled thousand or so people, and Julian's brother spoke to them as well, and there wasn't a single word in any of the Western media uh, of, a, of a report of that protest. And it was a serious protest, it completely ignored. So, yeah, that we're getting a very, very one-sided narrative here. What they've taken in so far from the smear campaign about uh, his cats or the allegations in Sweden or blah or blah or this or that or the other, none of which are substantive in any way, as we know. They're a smokescreen uh, to divert our attention from the fact that he's being railroaded um, by the United States government, uh, as I said before, as an example to others, to scare the shit out of any other potential journalist who might stand up and speak the truth about war crimes and other things that our governments do not want to be reported. They want to keep all that stuff secret. And Assange is one of those essential publishers, um, and there are precious few of them, which is why he is so precious to us all, who are prepared to take the risk of actually reporting the reality of our lives to us, to we the people, which is our right to know. And they are, um, they are applying the heaviest possible penalty they can for him stepping out of line and doing his job as a journalist. You were outside the Home Obviously. Office with John Pilger, as you said. He came on the show. He was visibly shocked about uh, the appearance of Julian Assange, not hardly being able to speak. You think that uh, you just said they're going to kill him? But they are killing him. If I, I wasn't in the courtroom two days ago, but I've read Craig Murray's account of what happened in the courtroom, and Craig Murray was devastated by what he saw. They're friends, they're quite close friends. But he said, you know, he, he's lost over two stone in weight. That's like 15 kilos or something he's lost. He's balding at an alarming rate. But what's more alarming is the fact that even when they asked him his name and so on and so forth, he was stumbling over finding ways to speak. So they've been, obviously, they've been drugging him. God knows what they've been doing. Well, we do know that they've been keeping him in solitary confinement. So 23 hours a day, he's banged up in a cell. He is exhibiting all um, the symptoms, according to the accounts that I've read, of somebody who's been subjected to uh, torture in a routine uh, and way over many months. And um, he, he looks like people who've been, who've been, who come out blinking from the dungeon after they've been tortured for many months. Um, and so, so you can see that he's very frail he, and, and he, he is in real danger of them actually ending his life. If, you know, before they ever get to an extradition uh, hearing, but the fact that they're even having one is disgusting beyond all belief. This makes an absolute mockery of the idea that we have a rule of law in the United Kingdom. You know, Magna Carta might just as well not have happened. <laughs> because this, this, this just says no. The law, the magistrates' courts and the law, is actually just a tool uh, for whoever it is who rules us all. In this case, the government of the United States of America. That's why they were in the court, well, why they were in the magistrates' court, pulling Vanessa Barrister's strings, and she was responding like a puppet and doing everything that they wanted her to do and saying everything that they wanted her to say, with a bit of prodding from the QC. What's his name? James Lewis, 
who, who, who was representing the United States government in our magistrate's court, you know, in our capital city, in our country, we, are, we have become such willing lackeys of, of the empire of the United States of America that we allow this to happen without there being a general uproar or people taking to the street. And of course, even when a few people do take to the streets, like John Pilger and I did three weeks ago outside the Home Office, it's not reported in a single newspaper or by any television channel anywhere on either side of the Atlantic, either in the United States or in the United Kingdom. So, so, so um, you know, Orwell and Huxley were always kind of arguing with each other about who had the closest, um, who had come up with the closest view of what the dystopia might look like in the future. Uh, I think we've got a lot of both because we have um, the big brother, uh, Orwellian, dystopian nightmare which is quite clear to all of us and it's happening it happened two days ago on October the 22nd in that magistrate score um, or Huxley well you only have to look out in the street and you see the people the walking dead going by with their earbuds in listening to God knows what and taking absolutely no notice of the fact that this journalist is being murdered by our governments and we walk by with our earbuds in. I only say earbuds because that's like the soma now. It's the iPhone is, is the soma. It's the drug. This is the opiate of the masses now. It's this attachment to clicking away on our iPhones as we, as we walk unsinking, unfeeling, uncaring through our lives and allow this bullshit to take place in our names in our courts, running fast and loose with our law, the law that should belong to us, the people, and it doesn't, certainly. This channel did cover uh, your demonstration and your rendition of which you were here outside the Home Office. Uh, Barrester, you're... I'm sure you did. Barrester, of course, you're referring to is the, uh, was the presiding judge. The, uh, you and the UN may say he was tortured. Uh, the British government denies that he is being tortured, in fact, uh, even rejected a request from Spain about a, about um, questions uh, via video link of CIA bugging. Last time on this show, you said that Lenin Moreno took an IMF bribe, which he denies, to release Assange from his asylum at the London Ecuadorian Embassy. Uh, he's now fled the capital. Do you think he's getting some sort of just desserts in Ecuador? Thank goodness for that, you know. Uh, he fled the capital, I have to say, as well, in the wake of him then making the announcement that he decided to give their national park away to Chevron so they could destroy it, extracting oil, in the same way that they did in, in Lago Agria, which is the area of Ecuador that I went to, um, to look at some of the um, thousand... Uh, waste pits that Texaco left there in the wake of their drilling operations between 1961 and 1993. What a stark contrast between the presidency uh, that elected to give um, political, as political asylum, political asylum to Julian Assange and Moreno, who had him removed from the Ecuadorian embassy in London by special branch and so on, is graphic and terrifying. But it's a picture that is happening all over the world. It's, ha it's happening there. It's, it's happening, obviously, in Ecuador. It, it, I've been speaking to my friends in Santiago over the last few days. So it's now it's happening in, Ch in Chile. In Santiago, where, because Piñera was re-elected president. I remember Mr. Piñera from when I was there doing the war, uh, before he was booted out the last time. So now every day there's a curfew, the military on the streets. This is standard. This is going back to Pinochet. This is classic neoliberal, neo-fascist. How do you contain the people? Shoot a few. They'll come to heel. So now, we, we, now, thank goodness, the people of Chile are saying no. And every night at curfew time, they're banging pots, leaning out of their windows and they're banging on Tim Potts with spoons, and they're singing Victor Hara's uh, famous song about the path to peace. Um, 
so I, I feel a tiny kind of surge of pride in those people who are resisting this neo-fascist um, governments and presidencies that are springing up. So there's Bolsonaro in Brazil, there's Pinheiro in Chile, there's Moreno in, um, in Ecuador, and so on and so forth. And the place is obviously where the people <coughs> have managed to maintain a grasp on the reins of power, like Venezuela, are under huge attack um, from the United States of America to try and disrupt that and impose another neo-fascist dictatorship on the country, i.e. Guido, who it, it seems now as if that wave may have passed. But it's very difficult for countries to survive because of uh, institutions like the IMF, which is just an arm of American imperialism. Anyway, that's the way I see it. But, so, you, but go on, Chile. You fight back. I've met Pinheiro. I, met, I had an hour-long meeting with him in the presidential palace when I was there because at the time there was student unrest. And they were killing them in the streets. They had the army out there and they were shooting them and the streets were littered with spent tear gas grenades and rubber bullets and live, and live ammunition as well. And when I said to Pina, I, I, I questioned him about that. I said, why, why, are you, why are you killing these students in the streets? You know, don't you think it's a bit heavy handed? He said to, he looked me in the eye and he said, there have been 1,200 injuries reported in the, uh, in the unrest and blah, blah, blah. And of those, 1,100 were to policemen. <laughs> and I thought, you've got to be kidding me. And obviously, he was kidding me. But that's the level upon which they work. They just lie. They just, they look into the camera and they tell, and they, or into your eyes, and they lie to you. Because the people, the people in San Diego know what's going on. The people understand what's happening. We obviously invite the ambassadors of all the countries you just mentioned on this show, uh, especially the Chilean one about the Cazuela In the past few days, Bernie Sanders running for the 2020 presidential campaign. He said, um, I know you've tweeted against his policy on Venezuela. The EU, I should add, still recognizes Juan Guaido as the leader of Venezuela. Bernie Sanders, though, says if he was president, he won't be prosecuting under the 1917 Espionage Act. Sign of hope? Any movement away from where we are now is a good thing. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't have a great deal of faith in the Democratic Party in the United States of America, but having said that, I have a lot of faith in some of the young congresswomen who are there now. And so I see that AOC, uh, has just endorsed Saunders officially. Uh, 2020 is, is, is going to be a monumental uh, year um, in American politics. And we, we can all absolutely accept the fact that American politics affect us all. Um, they, they do, and their foreign policy affects everyone in the world uh, in a very negative way at the moment. But it might be that if they get a more progressive um, system of government in the United States, they may b stop being able to affect the world in a positive way. I'm sure Sanders is a good man. He, all he was doing about Venezuela when I berated him was he was tr trotting out the mainstream media mantra about the dictator Maduro and the shining light Guido and blah, 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 which was complete nonsense, as has been shown and as we all now know. So that was just him being ignorant and not taking the time, not bothering to take the time to actually speak to people on the ground and find out what was really going on in Venezuela and what the, uh, and what the Venezuelan people actually think about the Bolivarian Revolution and, and about um, the legacy of Hugo Chavez. They are deeply, deeply attached to it. You have to remember that before that, they, they, they lived in a post colonial um, system of rich people and slaves. I wrote an opera about the French Revolution a number of years ago, and there's a line in it, in, what, in a tenor aria, and it says this, it says, tears like falling rain, slake the thirst and douse the flames, and cooling in the crucible an idea forms, a nugget of belief in the hearts of the poor that maybe in the dawn's new light, they have a right to the law.
Well, that, that's kind of central to the way, you know, I believe in human rights and I believe that all people, whether rich, poor, black, white, brown, Muslim, Christian, whatever, this, that, the other, it doesn't matter, have a right to the law. And so does Julian Assange. And his right to the law is being denied by a masquerade, by a kangaroo court in one of the oldest supposedly civilized cities in the world, London. WikiLeaks, of course, revealed so much information about the lies told by the powerful in Latin America and also revealed the Clinton emails. Clinton, of course, destroying Sanders' attempt at the presidency of 2016. Now Hillary Clinton's claiming Chelsea Gabbard is a Russian asset. Is she a Russian asset? Is Julian Assange a Russian asset? Are you a Russian asset? What's going on with that? Well, it's just rubbish. The whole Russiagate thing was always absolute nonsense from start to finish. The idea that a government or another government might interfere in the election of a foreign country, well, obviously they do. I mean, look, look, look at the history of the United States of America in the last hundred years. They've done nothing but interfere in other people's governments. Often they just do it with assassination or force, or they go in with and buy it. You know, you know, the best way, as we all know, to subjugate a people is to lend them money. To identify Russia as an enemy of America is exactly the kind of diversion that Hillary Clinton and the other warmongers in the Democratic and the Republican parties, that's exactly the diversion that they need so that the people of America don't look down and suddenly go, well, hold on a minute, the gap between those of us who need help, who need health care and so on and so forth, and the, and the ones who live in the iCloud up in the sky, who, who the multi, multi, multi billionaires, the gap is absolutely unacceptable. Well, just back to Julian I've Assange got, I've got for a second. Are you going to write to uh, Prime, Minister, yeah. Prime Minister Boris Johnson and maybe uh, get the Prime Minister to uh, exercise clemency on his extradition to the United States? <laughs> Boris Johnson? Are you kidding? Um, I did write uh, last year uh, when I was engaged um, in moves to get some children out of Camp Roj in, in northeastern Syria. And I did get them out in the end. But I wrote to the, the foreign secretary, who was Hunt at the time. He didn't even reply. Now, that is really weirdly bizarre, because within the context of a, of a, of a government in the United Kingdom, at least you would expect the foreign secretary to have an office with a secretary who could say, who could reply, Dear Mr. Waters, thank you for your letter, f off, or whatever. I didn't even get, not even the courtesy of a reply. Boris Johnson wouldn't be, unless it was a photo op for him, he wouldn't give it, he, he couldn't care less what I think about anything, or what anybody thinks about anything. You've got to remember that Boris Johnson is an old Etonian. They are taught at school that they're special. They're taught at school that they're exceptional and that they have a kind of moral duty to lead because they've been born to it, first of all, otherwise they wouldn't be at Eton, and then they've been educated to rule and it's, their, and, and it's an obligation. Boris Johnson believes this. I'm quite sure he does. Anne's a buffoon. I wouldn't waste my breath on him. Roger Waters, thank you so much. We'll obviously invite the uh, now backbench uh, MP. Okay, so that was uh, um, Roger Waters just commenting on Julian Assange and some of the other things that are taking place. One person, um, who was it, that mentioned regarding RT, if it was a good source of news. Now, RT is the platform. Um, is RT a good source of news? First time, this is Tink. Uh, is RT a good source of news? First time seeing them, likely due to the algorithms. So, Tink, here's the kicker, right? That was news reporting from RT uh, interviewing Julian Assange, right? RT has some new reporters on there, which are absolutely phenomenal. Some of the th programs, I watch every single episode that they put out. Not that I agree with everything that they put out, but I watch every single episode that they put out. 
One of them is On Contact by Chris Hedges. This show right here. For example, this interview right here, 28 minutes, basically an hour into a uh, half an hour interview, is Chris Hedges interviewing the Yuan repertoire that was assigned to find out if Julian Assange was being tortured. And in this video, uh, the repertoire, I forgot his name, uh, Special Repertoire on Torture, Julian Assange, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, torture, Nils Melzer, okay, states that he went in there neither supporting Julian Assange or being against Julian Assange. He went in there as someone completely unbiased. He didn't know what to expect. He didn't know too much about WikiLeaks. He didn't know too much about Assange. He didn't know really what was going on. He came out of that blown away that Julian Assange was being tortured in the UK. Okay, so when the question comes up, is torture allowed in the UK? 100% is allowed in the UK because it is taking place. RT is a good source about non-Russian stuff. Agreed, frankness, right? Don't use it for source of news for Russia. Use it for source of news of what's going on in the UK, in France with the yellow vest, in Barcelona, in Spain, in Ecuador, in Venezuela, in Bolivia, in, in the United States, in Canada. Okay. Now, regarding torture, let's hit this article as well. This is one thing I wanted to go through because a lot of people have been stating, you know, oh, Julian, so da, 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 do, if I like him or not like him, when I talk to people, I look at anybody. I've had friends in my community, some of them supposedly enlightened, right? Asking me, why a sport Julian Assange if I like him? <laughs> and my eyes roll when I when I hear people say that because personally I don't know Julian Assange, right? All I know is what he has done. His actions speak louder than any one that I've ever known about, right? It's not a question of liking Julian Assange or someone in his condition. It's a question of wanting equality wanting justice wanting freedom wanting to hold your governments and corporations accountable wanting your country your laws not to allow torture okay and this is an article by stephen parrot and he's phenomenal i'm going to supply the link here as well in the chat he's a phenomenal reporter okay and this is a piece about julian assange being tortured now before we get into it, i'm just going to read a couple of comments in the chat um, also, do your own research on the subject you want to know more about. Don't just blindly trust any news papers or journalists. 100% agreed. And for example, I link people to On Contact. I think Chris Hedges is the, uh, what's it called? Something bees, the mums bees or the whatever it is. I have tremendous amount of respect for Chris Hedges. I don't agree with everything he has to say. I don't have to agree with everything he has to say. I just have to agree that he is speaking from a place of research, journalism. He's not representing corporations or governments. He's speaking as a human being, right? And he is open to dialogue. Okay. Trusting blindly is the most stupid thing you can do. 100% agree, Sticks Armana. Okay. Most people, all of, most people, me, don't quote have time want to do proper in-depth research on important topics especially when you can't trust practically any anyone any source and the more lies you uncover the more depressed you get this world surely doesn't mirror what you're taught as children all of agreed with you 100 i've gone through periods of my life where man it's overwhelming what i learn right but for some reason that has empowered me it's because probably I'm much older than most of you watching right now, right? I've had time to be able to digest this information and really realize not for me not to be distracted by the noise that corporate propagandists, mainstream news sources try to distract me with. Oh, a little noise here, a little noise here, a little noise here. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the prize. As Malcolm X would say, if you're not paraphrasing Malcolm X, if you're not careful, the mainstream news will make you hating the oppressed and loving the oppressors, right? 
you have to be aware of what's taking place and what is happening right now with Julian Assange I see people all around me which are praising the oppressors and hating the oppressed right as Wilhelm Reich has said as as uh, Robert Anton Wil uh, Wilson has written about we're watching the crucifixion of an individual right now in our society in real time with the masses of people who are supposed to be enlightened praising the crucifixion crucifixion right that is enlightening okay that tells you the amount of propaganda brainwashing programming that the general population in the western world is under okay frightening to a degree which should give you rise should motivate you should give you power to try to do something about it because this isn't a short game this is a long game wanting your humans right protected uh, beast among beasts I I told people the truth many years ago people just said don't worry focus on the good things instead yeah and that's crazy like just regarding the war on drugs for me personally I've been talking to family and friends of how horrendous the war on drugs has been for like 20 years if not more right and people kept on telling me chicho oh you're out of your mind it's always been like this and whenever someone says it's always been like this they're literally uh, uh, they're they're not functioning properly right it means they've been programmed to a degree that think that human history for the millennia that we know about in the millennia that we don't know about right has always been like this according to the war on drugs or, or capitalism or corporatism or all this jazz right there are many people who are misinformed it is our duty okay if we care about our societies if we care about other people if we care about our own future if we're just selfish we just want a better world for ourselves we have to speak out against it right how was Julian able to maintain Hillary uh, uh, able to uh, obtain Hillary's emails it, they were leaks they were leaks like in the corporate uh, Western news sources they keep on saying it was a hack experts people <laughs> like William Beanie the number one expert regarding hacking leaking uh, NSA the person who wrote the program for NSA for data collection the number one expert in the world regarding this situation has come out and said Hillary's emails were not hacked they were leaked from an insider period okay dumb people don't understand they are dumb a sheep don't know it's a sheep it doesn't right I love Trump for responding to Hillary saying I'm glad you're not president and Trump saying yeah because you would be in jail like <laughs> crazy let's read the torture stuff okay torturing Julian Assange so I'm going to read this article as well and there's some videos embedded here that we're going to watch as well lately I've been served a lot uh, I've been served a lot that has been and still is hard to digest but I guess the red pill has the best aftertaste still wish it were easier though olive brother ignorance is bliss if you're ignorant for the rest of your life right but once you know you cannot unknow once you know what epstein represented what epstein did all the people involved with epstein all the people that supported epstein all the money that epstein made the age the sex of all the victims of epstein and his clan and how large that clan is that is tentacles going to Hollywood Wall Street and our governments running our corporations running the mainstream media's news sources once you learn about that you cannot unlearn it right it is impossible the only way to unlearn it is to you can't <laughs> like it's impossible once you know the history be behind that once you know about bbc and seville whatever his name was which was the equivalent of epstein right in the uk where he was allowed to sexually abuse 
children for a number of decades with the BBC top executives protecting him and giving him access to more children and allowing him to take children to the royal family and prostitute them out. Once you learn that, you cannot unlearn that. And if you do, you're foolish. You're just as evil as they are if there is such a thing as called evil. Sorry if I'm going off a little bit, but this is extremely important because I'm finding out that a lot of people aren't aware of what's really taking place in our world, right? Which is quite sad to see and where it's heading, okay? Because it's not going to be a pretty place. Uh, not that it is right now, but videos like the Chileans singing. Should we take a look at that again, gang? Let's take a look at that again. Let's have a let's have a little motivational song for us. Are you guys up for it? Should we do it again? Should we listen to this video again? Yeah. Let's do it. This again is a protest in Chile against uh, Panero's neoliberal regime continue. A Chilean orchestra gives a breathtaking open air performance of the people's the people united will never be defeated in Santiago. And this was, as far as I know, yesterday. It's a dark side of the world you show us here, Chicho. But are people ready to know, know this? I mean, do people really want to know this? I think so. I think so. Sticks are mine. I'm going to allow that for sure. Uh, if you search on Prince Andrew pictured inside pedophile Jeffrey Epstein New York house on YouTube you see two famous faces popping up one of them is Epstein himself yeah let's listen to this video again okay because we need motivation times like this we need to be inspired this is pure pure power as far as I'm concerned okay Pure power. These are brave people coming out and making statements. 100%. And for those of you who don't know really how brutal the police have been in Chile, okay? Is it a riot better though? Is that a riot? I don't think that's a riot. I think that's the people standing up. Let me show you what the Chilean police have been doing. Let's take a look at that. It's just a one minute little. Let me see if I can do it. You know what? It was on Twitter that I find it found it. That's it's a while ago. So let's see if we can find it. Um, let's 
sorry if i'm scrolling really fast here's another one by the way this was uh victor jar okay uh, people singing victor jars This was uh, a few days ago, a couple of days ago. Okay. That was pretty awesome, Chicho. Haven't seen that before. Yeah, indeed. When you people in general can cover your eyes and ears. Uh, okay, this is the video. I'm, let me show you this. Let me just read this comment. And I'm going to show you what the uh, Chilean police have been doing. The Chilean military has been doing. This is what a military dictatorship is right this is what's coming to the west if people are not careful this is neoliberalism at its peak or some people say at its collapse right all the people singing have witnessed this in chile the opera singer at night that was singing outside our window has witnessed this all of those people are in danger of being disappeared and if you know the history of latin america that is a huge huge uh, probability right come out your small hole in the world you can specifically avoid learning anything that will interrupt the security but what are we as individuals supposed to do with the truth there isn't much one can do to my estimation all of there's the first thing you do is when you for me when i hear people parroting propaganda I knock them off their seat not physically but i start laying down truth after truth after truth until they're they're they question their their own sanity right especially in a group setting when they start parodying crap that they hear from cnn fox news bbc cbs or whatever it is i just lay down truth after truth after truth i don't let propaganda within my vicinity to circulate okay i try not to that's my step given that the most diabolical criminals are also the ones uh, also the ones with the most power our odds aren't very encouraging i disagree what we just witnessed was pure power with music right with music the only power that military dictatorships and these people have is fiat currency is to destabilize regions is to do scorched earth mentality as soon as you're not consuming their products they lose all their power right that's why alternate forms of currency is are are extremely important right this may seem trolly but seriously since we know all the terrible terrible things leaders are doing at what point does it become immoral to not take violent action against these groups and individuals personally i can't do the violent action because i i agree with this in regards to chris hedges okay my part is not that okay chris hedges basically stated that the state can do much more violence than any human being can even imagine right so what we have to do and the reason this is occurring is because of pure bureaucracy right so the one thing we have to do is eliminate the centralization of power because once you eliminate the centralization of power you cut off the bureau bureaucratic regime right because a lot of these people a lot of people that argue that oh socialism uh communism uh capitalism neo neoliberalism neoconservatism and all this jazz right a lot of people say oh chile was a perfect example of open democracy but this is pure bureaucracy right 
the word has come down from the top to the military to the foot soldiers to do this to the Chilean people okay we, this is one minute video of the brutality that the Chilean military and police have been using okay ready And people are in the streets singing, right? Yeah, Chicho, you can't show that. Oh, I can't show that? Banned. <laughs> I can't show that, Dante. I'm sorry. Obviously, we don't promote this in any way. We don't promote this in any way, for sure. Am I showing something bad? Am I not allowed to show this? Let me know. Oops. Did we do a bad thing? Keep me, keep me on the straight, uh, straight and narrow, Dante. I don't, I really don't know. Uh, any blood and guts is ban, bannable. I think video. They don't like that. There was some blood in the video. They don't. Oh crap! I hope we don't get banned. If we get banned, we got to start a new channel. Doesn't matter if you promote it. Doesn't matter if you don't promote it. Blood and heavy violence is terms of service. Oh, can't show gore. Oh, sorry. Guess we shouldn't have showed it. I got a little hot. Anything we can do about it now? I don't think so. Whoops. Whoops. Well, hopefully Twitch has, if it, if it shows it has strikes it's only going to be three seven fourteen days if you get banned well i'm not reporting okay good delete the vi vod delete vod and restart stream delete vod okay you know what we're doing this i don't want to delete it so i'm going to stop the stream gang i'm going to wait until it downloads and then i'm going to delete it okay we're stopping the stream done 